Has there ever been a time where you were playing The Sims and you were choosing outfits for your Sim and you were like, man, I really wish I had these clothes in real life. If you said yes, then cool. If you said no, I'm gonna pretend you said yes. But basically I was thinking this last year when I was playing The Sims and I wrote this idea down of like, what if I recreated the outfits from The Sims? So I decided to edit my Sim that I based on myself and go ahead and choose at least four outfits to choose from and hopefully I can make at least two of them. I'm not really sure about the number, but the minimum has to be at least two outfits for this video. So because it is a lengthy video, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so right here is my old sim that I had from last year. Um, we look kind of different now. I don't know if you can see our similarities. I'm going to be using her as the model for the outfits that we're going to come up with, so I'm pretty excited. If you can, if you can see right here, I put Lady of the Knits. This sim has yarn running through her veins and will stop at nothing on her quest to craft the perfect knittable. Alrighty, glad that hasn't changed. So I'm going to go ahead and take off her glasses. We're just going to change her. Um, does she look like me? Does she look like me? All right, her face is fine. Works for me. It's as close as we're getting, I guess. I don't know what I look like. I wish I could at least bookmark the things I like, you know, but whatever. I don't know if I want to do it for winter time. It will make more sense because it is winter time. So I think the theme for this is going to be winter. So all four outfits have to be winter themed. Just because winter outfits tend to have a lot of knit and crochet pieces and that would kind of make it easier on myself. But I can't just do full on sweaters because that's kind of cheating, you know? So I have, to, I have to spice it up a little bit. So we have this little, it looks like like a, like a seed stitch knit sweater, which is cute. Or like a moss stitch sweater. Ooh, that looks amazing on my skin. She's so pretty. I like that, that's cute. That would definitely have to be made with some wool. It just looks like a wool sweater to me. Also this right here, it's a knit sweater vest, like a crop sweater vest with just a basic baby tee under and they have like some cute colors. I definitely wanna do one that's more like grunge style in terms of color and then more pastel pink baby doll type color. Cause I think this is really pretty as well. And these days I've been really into like baby blues and pastel pinks and lavenders and stuff like that. And I, I've always been obsessed with green, but I think I need to cool it on the green a little bit just to spice up my wardrobe. This is cool. I'm not sure how I would make the ends of the sweater really sharp like this, but it is really cute and creative, I think. But it, it's creative on the bottom, but it does look like a kind of a boring sweater. I mean, the stripe- oh, okay. I see why it's broken now. I forgot what these diamonds are called. Argyle? Is it Argyle? But this is really cute. This would be a challenge to do because I've never done an Argyle sweater. It would take forever though. Now, this is cute. This is a cable knit cardigan. Looks like it was scrunched up, so like I would probably make the sleeves really long and then scrunch them up on the arm to make it look more like the sim. So you just make the front and the back exactly this. Oh wait, no, 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 no. You make the back with like the v-neck with like decreases and then you do the same with the front, but the only difference is you're making two panels instead of the one panel like in the back. And then you do the two arms and then add the ribbing. And then we have just like the basic version without the knit cables on here which is cute. I played around with this sweater before when I was playing The Sims and I think I definitely for sure wanna recreate this sweater. I love how it's short in the front and long in the back. It looks like it's chunky. I love the V-neck and how it kind of slides off the shoulder a little bit. And look, she looks so cute in it, or sorry. <clears throat> I look so cute in it. I feel like honestly, to get these pants in real life, all I would have to do is just buy some wide leg black pants and then I would just have to take the time to paint on the um, Care Bears or embroider them. I want to knit some shorts. If I could knit shorts like these, then that would be cool. Um, for socks, I kind of want to learn how to knit socks. Like, look how cute these are. If I could knit like 
these socks or something. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make her outfits really quick and I'll be back. Three hours later. All right, so it. I made seven outfits in total because I couldn't really choose one. So I'm gonna just go over them as quickly as possible and then I'll show like screenshots of the ones that I actually chose. So this one is one of my favorites. Um, I dressed her in some pants and some sneakers that I already own. And if I did this outfit, I would make the ear muffs here, the teddy bear ear muffs. I would make v-neck sweater and maybe the turtleneck. Now for the next one that I have, I think this one is just super cute. I have some leg warmers over some boots that I wanna buy very soon. So I think that'll be cute with this outfit. I would crochet this skirt and then use like some fuzzy yarn on the bottom to do this fluffy rim that's identical to this one on the sim. And then I would obviously make the scarf like this one. I would make the brown sweater vest as well as the brown beanie and the turtleneck that she's wearing. So essentially this entire outfit would be completed. Um, I wanna bring up really quick that with this one, because I made this one with brown, I was thinking of changing this one to this red instead and then it'll match the shoes. But I really like how the brown looks. But I also enjoyed how this would look and then maybe put a white uh, turtleneck underneath. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of want to stick with the brown one with this one. But yeah, this would this one's going to take a long time, but I think it'll be really cute when it's done. So I have seven different outfits that I can choose from. I have to do a minimum of two outfits and I prefer to do a max of three. So whatever I choose is going to be in the next clip. Um, and then after that, it'll be time to actually buy the yarn and get started. So see you in the future. I don't know if you can see me, but the yarn has arrived. Okay, so we have the first outfit here, which is the brown and white v-neck oversized sweater. And then right here for the outfit accessories, we're going to have a bear earmuffs that goes with it. And then we could pair it with whatever clothes we have in our closet. And then for the second outfit, we have a lavender sweater vest, a white skirt, and some white leg warmers. And on the white skirt, there's also going to be some fluffy white yarn on the bottom. I just haven't went to pick it up from the closet. And then for the third outfit, we have some Hello Kitty pants. I have some white yarn in the closet also, and also whatever white yarn is left over, I can use for this as well. So now it is officially time to attempt to create the Sims outfits. The first outfit I decided to work on was this one with the brown sweater and the bear earmuffs. I was originally going to make the sweater red and black like this photo here, but when I was ordering the yarn, they were out of the red yarn, so I just went with brown. So this is what I have so far. I'm thinking that I made it a bit small. Um, I started it the same way I usually start all of my sweaters with a cast on of 70. but. Because it's ribbed, it looks smaller than it is and it does stretch, but I'm worried that if I put it together, the stretch will kind of be a fitted look and the sweater is more a bit oversized. So I might have to start over either that or I'll have to make this just the ribbing. And then from here on, I do stockinette stitch. I did a couple of more rows thinking that the size I went with was okay. But after holding it up to myself, I knew it just wouldn't give me the oversized look I was going for. So I decided to just start over. But then I thought, what if I use this for the arms? And I was excited thinking I could do that. But then I realized that 
the arm stripes are in the middle, so I just went ahead and unraveled the project to start over. I wish actually knitting the sweater would be as fast as unraveling it. I even thought about trying to do it in stockinette stitch, but again, it just wouldn't be oversized, so I finished unraveling the whole panel. I decided to use the unraveled yarn for one of the arm panels since the cast on for that was perfect for the arm size I wanna go for. Okay, so I made it kind of like one third of the front or back panel, whichever I decide this to be done, but I've been realizing that doing the rib stitch, the knit one purl one stitch for the entire project it's kind of putting a damper on my mood so i think i'm gonna start this over for the third and last time but i'm gonna go all the way to here and then i'm gonna do stockinette stitch and then this will just be one big ribbing on the bottom and then everything else will be stockinette stitch because it's just taking me a longer time to do rib stitch just for the back panel and I'm realizing I don't really want to do rib stitch for the entire project. It'll look nicer, like this looks like it'll be a super cute sweater, but I just don't want to do that. So I'm not going to force myself to do something that I don't want to do. I'm going to alter it slightly just for my liking and then I think that I'll like the project a lot more. So I went ahead and pulled the brown off once more, and once I got the last row of brown off, I began adding my needles back into the project so that I wouldn't have to start from scratch. When I added the brown back, I had to untwist the stitches so that all of the stitches would look neat, but I only had to do that for the first row. After that, working on the back panel was a breeze. I worked on it until I got to row 97 with the brown and then began working on the shoulder sections. To separate the shoulders, I knitted 36 stitches, then I casted off 25 stitches for the neck area, and then knit 36 stitches for the second shoulder. I then decreased on the inner side of the shoulder sections where my neck would be on both sides of the panel until I did eight rows of decreases. After that, I had my back panel. For the front panel, I started it the exact same way I did with the back panel. The only difference is I knitted up to row 47 since in the photo, the back panel is longer than the front panel. Once I got to row 48, I started the v-neck decreases. I used the back panel to kind of measure out how I would make the v-neck, measuring out where I wanted the v-neck to start and where I wanted the front panel to end. So I placed the back panel on my chest and then added stitch markers to the stitches and then wrote down what row those stitches were on. So once I reached those stitches, I know where to begin the v-neck and where to end the front panel. I then worked the front panel until it reached where I wanted the panel to stop at. I started working on the v part of the sweater. I counted to the middle of the panel and then added a stitch marker into two sets of stitches in the middle since that's where I'll decrease for each section. I then worked regular knit stitches until the first stitch marker. At the marker, I added a right leaning decrease and then turned the work over, ignoring the other side of the sweater. I worked the entire side with a decrease in the middle on every other knit row until I reached row 79. After that, I decreased on every knit row until there were 29 stitches remaining on that side, but I forgot to make sure that the front panel was shorter than the back panel. So after holding it to my chest again, it was longer than I wanted, so I took apart the front panel until it reached one of the stitch markers I added and started decreasing on every row until there was 29 stitches remaining. While I did this, I rewatched The Last of Us, which is kind of my favorite show at the moment. It's making me want to try playing the game after getting stuck at the museum part in the literal beginning of the game. Once I finished, I took a break and did my hair, which I took out probably a couple hours later, but it was fun to do Bantu knots for the first time. Here is what the sweater is looking like so far. Um, the back is supposed to be longer than the front, but I I should have made it a bit longer or I should have did the front first, but it's, it's gonna be okay. Like in the photo, you're supposed to see a little bit of brown before it goes to the ribbing, um, but the top ribbing touches the bottom ribbing like this, but I mean, technically it is longer. <laughs> so I'm gonna connect and sew the shoulders together and then I'm gonna create a ribbing for the v-neck and then I'm gonna start on the arms. After I attached the shoulders together, I attached white yarn to the v-neck of the sweater and did five rows of knit one and purl one. After the five rows, I cast it off and then sewed the middle of the sweater together since that was the best way I knew how to kind of join it without having to join in the round when I first started it. And look, it doesn't look that bad, so my method works, I suppose. Okay, so this is what we have so far. It's looking like my sim. But for real, um, it's not gonna stay on me right because I don't have the sleeves on, but I do need to figure out where I should stop the sleeves when I start them. But it is gonna kind of hang off my shoulder, I'm seeing, because I did make it pretty big. But it looks like the 
the arms are stopping probably almost to my, I want to say a little bit above my elbow. So I'm just going to make the arm until it reaches that part. And then it's probably going to be a tiny bit oversized, like probably reach like where my fingers start. And then I can um, roll it up like in the photo. But so far, so good. It's not ribbed like the photo, but I think this is perfectly fine. I got started with the arms doing a cast on a 53 and then worked three rows of ribbing before doing the rest in stockinette stitch. I did 37 rows with the brown, then six rows with white and six rows of brown, six rows of white again, and then finished off with nine rows of brown. I then attached the arms to the sweater and it was complete. I went ahead and got started with the second outfit right after the sweater since I wanted to get out the way the pieces that would take the longest to do. So I went ahead and started the vest off camera um, and I kind of wanted to see how quickly I could do it. So I started both panels at the same time just to get the ribbing out of the way. And then I started figuring out how exactly to do the vest um, since it has the twists and everything. So I did knit one purl one for 10 rows for the bottom ribbing and it looked kind of long in the picture so I made it long. I was going to do 15 rows but I thought 10 rows was okay. And then I just kind of just went at it with the twists. I should, what I should have done was made everything flat first and then twisted for the first time up here because it kind of looks lumpy up here but I'm not going to start over. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Usually, in, in the past, I would have started over, but when it comes to twists, I don't really like starting over, so I try to make sure I do everything as good as I can. Um, but this is going to be the front front panel, that's going to be the back panel. To do the cables, I use a cable needle like this, and all I do for the beginning portion of the vest is do the two pearls in the beginning, and when I reach where the cable portion is, I take the cable needle and put two stitches on it, and then knit the last two stitches of the cable section. Then I take the cable needle and knit those two stitches, which then twists the stitches. After that, I do two pearls again, which is for the reverse stockinette stitch, and then for this portion, which is just a regular stockinette section, I knit four Four stitches and then do two stitches for the reverse stockinette before reaching the cable section again and I just repeat this on every sixth row until it's how long I want it to be before I need to start my decreases all right I'm looking a little rough right now but bear with me um, so right now I have gotten to the point where I think I'm ready to start the v-neck and the decreases the vest is gonna stop at like right around here so it can be the craft vest like in the photo and so I'm gonna start the v-neck here, but also do decreases on the side to really make it the vest part where you know how on vests, it'll kind of go inwards. And then I have to attach the ribbing on the side. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, when I put it to my chest like this, it shows that for it to be right here, I have to stop it, stop the decreases around here. And that's about, that's about, 10 stitches on that side all right so right here are the points where i'll i'll be decreasing until it reaches this part right here and then i'll just continue to work it normally while still making the v-neck and i think that gives it a good area so that when i do the ribbing it'll fit properly hopefully this works because Honestly, I half the time I don't know what I'm doing, so. I also marked the middle of the sweater and then marked the two stitches on one side and the other two stitches next to it to indicate which stitches I'll decrease in for the v-neck. So I went ahead and started the row with a decrease in the first two stitches and then worked the cable and the row like normal until I got to the stitch marker. At the stitch marker, I added a decrease and then turned my work. Now, until the end of the section, I'll only be working on this side. For the arm decrease, I decreased on every knit row until I finished row 47, and continued to decrease for the v-neck until there were two cables left showing. So here's what it looks like after I finished all of the decreases on the arm side and in the middle. So this is kind of, if, I, if I'm making it stop right here, then it's already kind of reaching my shoulder. So I think I'm gonna cast off here and then finish everything that's on this side. And then the front panel will be done. 
And that's exactly what I did. I cast it off, reattached my yarn to the other side, and finished the other shoulder right away. Once I finished the back panel, I went ahead and attached the shoulders and the sides together. Then I attached the yarn to the v-neck portion of the vest and did knit one per one for four rows. After casting off, I sewed the two ends together at the front of the vest and repeated this for the armholes as well, and then the vest was complete. I don't spend much time on the process of me making the leg warmers since I just copied a pattern I made in my leg warmers video, but I made a pair of leg warmers that flared out just slightly so they will have the same effect as they do in the photos. So I just finished my leg warmers. All I have to do is just sew the sides together and then they'll be good to go. Um, but before I did that, I kind of wanted to get started with the skirt for this photo right here. <laughs> I was gonna use this as like a little basis because when I worked on a skirt with the central machine, I did two panels, which were 48 stitches on both panels which is around 90 something stitches. But when I did that, it was a bit loose at the top. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do a cast on of 80 or like 85 or make a little bit of a bigger cast on and then make the ribbing after. I'm still trying to decide, but I'm gonna do that. And then halfway through, I'll probably take a break and then put these together. I went ahead and did the cast on of 81 and then joined it in the round before doing four rows of ribbing and worked the body with stockinette stitches. Even though the photo doesn't show a big ribbing on the skirt, I personally wanted my skirt to have it. The next day before I began to work on the skirt again, I tried putting it on and the way it only barely fit my leg told me that I needed to start over again. But before starting over, I stretched out the ribbing to see how many inches it was on each side. I even took off the needles to properly measure it and ended up just putting it on to see for myself and it fit okay. So I'm kind of glad I didn't start over. I reattached my needles and got back to work. I decided to make the skirt 10 and a half inches long and after I reached that length, I cast it off. Here is what the skirt is looking like so far. It is a bit tight, but only on this edge. And so I'm gonna crochet the rest of the fur part, like probably like up to here. So it will be not this mini of a skirt, but like to right here would be good and it won't be as tight but everything else is pretty solid with it i attached the white yarn with the crochet hook and crocheted nine rows before finishing the row and then the skirt was complete for the hat i used the knitting machine to my advantage which cut my time by like six hours honestly i just attached the brown yarn i used for the v-neck varsity sweater after i did 10 rows with the scrap yarn and then cranked the machine until Till I ran out of yarn and realized I didn't have any more brown, so that's uh, that. That's that for the hat. I then focused my attention to the earmuffs, which did have enough brown to complete. I started off with a magic circle and then chained six into the magic circle before pulling the tail closed to start my work. I then did an increase into each stitch to bring the stitches to 12 stitches and then continue with the pattern written here. Once I reached a size I enjoyed, I finished off my work and made three other ones. I chose random places to put in the tiny safety eyes and then created another circle for the bear's mouth area, making sure to sew the small circle under the eyes. While I did this though, the backs for the eyes kept popping off and I just didn't understand why, but I was able to get them on to be at least a little stable. I sewed on his nose and sewed on two black lines for the mouth and again, the backs of the eyes just fell off. I chose to ignore it until the very end, so I just weaved in all my ends and then decided to deal with the eye backs. I tried back after back and still to no avail, they just wouldn't stay. But then, all of a sudden, an angel appeared and stuck to the back like glue and then the other fell off. After finding backs that wouldn't fall off, finally, I got started with connecting the backs to my baby bears. I slip stitched the sides together until it was almost closed and then took some brown yarn that couldn't make my beanie and stuffed it on the inside. Then I slip stitched the rest of the baby bear closed and repeated this on the other bear. For the part that actually connects the two, all I did was chain 35 and single crocheted for six rows before sewing ends to the back of the earmuffs. I messed up on my first attempt and on the second one, I decided to sew it to 
the back of the bear which was perfect except it was off to the side and i had already weaved in the tail so there's nothing i can do about that unfortunately the last thing i did was add a chain to the bottom of each bear just to be able to tie the earmuffs to my head which was a chain of 35 but if you are going to do this i recommend making the chain longer so you can actually tie it under your head Because I didn't have braids in my hair anymore, I went back into the game and changed my Sim's hairstyle to fit what I had going on. And now to really turn myself into my Sim, I had to look the part as well. So I took the time to first do my makeup, which I'm honestly not that good at, but I tried to copy what my Sim had on and I think it turned out okay. Then I got dressed, did my hair, and now I reveal the outfits. First outfit is here to show and I am loving it. This is the first outfit I made sure that I kind of did my hair like her. Like if you can see she has bangs and I'm not cutting my bangs. So I just kind of bobby pinned it right here and then left out these strands. And then I did the little back twist on the sides and then put on my silver earrings just like her and then did the outfit. Um, I think it's really cute. I like it. The one thing I do feel like I should have done was I should have made this part of the skirt bigger and then I should have done the top ribbing lash. So I start from this stockinette, go all the way down, add the fluffy, and then towards the end, I attach yarn on the top and do the ribbing so that it would have been more secure because I, if I bend over, it's not going to be that great. But this is what see and you can also see like my underwear so we're not gonna turn them around <laughs> but yeah this is what it looks like i really like it though and the leg warmers came out really cute and they go perfect with my boots that i have and yeah i i like this outfit i probably will have to remake the skirt but this is an outfit that i would wear when i made this um i started it off with a ribbing like a one by one rib for the entire sweater but i was impatient i was like i can't oh my nail just broke that's perfect we love it here but yeah i was like i am not doing one by one rib for the entire sweater so i just started over like three times and then just did it with stockinette stitch and I did make it pretty big. It is bigger than I intended. However, with this hairstyle and semi-decent makeup, I guess, I don't know, and these cute little earmuffs that I made free-handed, I think it's really cute. And I also have those red converse on. I intentionally put red converse on here because I knew I had red converse, but you know, yeah, I think it looks cute. I, I thought the other outfit was going to be my favorite, but I am a person that likes cute outfits that are really comfortable and I like mini skirts, but at the same time, I just, I just like to have my legs out, you know, and I can't do that with mini skirts. I mean, you can do it if you want to, you can do it. <laughs> no one's stopping you. The one thing with these earmuffs is this eye keeps popping out it hasn't popped out yet when i put it on for this little showcase but i mean i'm not going to touch it either um and the other thing is i'll probably go back and make a longer chain because this one's kind of hard to tie because it's so short so i'll probably attach more yarn and everything um this was the first time i used this type of cotton usually the cotton yarn i buy i tend to avoid it because it's like really rough but this is actually a very soft cotton and i was really happy with it so if I want to do things with cotton from now on, I'll just use this brand. And every brand that I used is going to be linked in the description, by the way. But yeah, I was going to do those Hello Kitty pants, but these two outfits did take a lot of time. And maybe if you guys like this, I'll do a second episode where I do more sim outfits. Or maybe you guys choose the outfit or something like that. Um, but I... I'm very happy that you chose to watch this video. I hope this was fun. It inspired you to do the same. The Sims has so many cute outfits and hairstyles. So if you ever can't decide on what to wear, on what to make, on how to do your hair, how to do your makeup, literally just go into The Sims. The Sims is really helpful with figuring out different outfits and stuff. And yeah, 
Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video. See you soon.